Hey guys, Nishquick here. I've had this video idea in my mind for a very long time, I just didn't know when I was going to make it and put it out. I think now is the perfect time to do so. As many of you can see from the title and thumbnail of this video, this is me ranking my top 10 favorite Nintendo Switch games. And some of you guys might know if you've been following my channel for a very long time now, I've made a top 10 favorite Nintendo Switch games list all the way back in early 2022, but this is so early in 2022 that many of the games on this list had not even released or I hadn't even played them at that time in my life. So I want to recount a lot of my favorite games and favorite memories on the Nintendo Switch and just kind of rank them just for fun. But before we get started, just want to let you guys know this video may or may not come out around the time of my birthday as a little bit of a celebration. I just want to let you guys know, I don't ask for much in return, but you know what would be the best birthday present ever for me? If you guys just hit that like button, that's all I ask for. That would be the most amazing birthday present for me and that would actually help me out in so much of a monumental way that you guys don't even understand <laughs> and yeah let me know in the comments below what your favorite nintendo switch games are if you feel like ranking them in the comments below let me know all opinions are valid i want to hear you guys out if you guys think battle and wonder world is the best nintendo switch game i want to know why down in the comments let's talk about it and before we get started on the list i just want to lay down some ground rules because I am making this a little bit harder for myself, but it's also going to be a little fun. So here are my ground rules that I'm laying down for this list because this is my list and this is my rules. First rule is this list will only have Nintendo Switch exclusive games. Every single game on this list cannot be played on any other system. Because of that, that will exclude all games that are remasters and multi-platform releases so that means no xenoblade chronicles definitive edition and unfortunately no legend of zelda breath of the wild and there were some games in my older list like monster hunter rise and i was honestly considering putting shin megami tensei 5 on here but since that list those games are now multi-platform so those may or may not count on this list but some of these multi-platform releases and some of these remasters can be talked about in a quick little honorable mentions section I'll have later on in this video. Remakes, though, will be allowed, such as Paper Mario and the Thousand Year Door and Link's Awakening, but that's if I choose to have them on the list in the first place. One final rule is that I am prohibiting this list to only include one game per franchise. So the entire Xenoblade Chronicles trilogy will not be on here. Every single Legend of Zelda game will not be on here because then this list would probably just be all Xenoblade, Fire Emblem, and Zelda games. <laughs> Anyways, that's enough intro, enough ground rules. Let's get started with number 10. Number 10 is Mario Kart 8 Deluxe plus the booster course pack. And you guys are already saying, you just broke your own rule, and I I sort of did, but he hear me out on this. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe was one of my first ever Nintendo Switch games that I bought, and as I was playing it, I was like, oh, this is just the same game on the Wii U, or whatever, it's the same game. But then, that Booster Course Pass came out, and it almost felt like an entirely new game. It fits so well within the Mario Kart 8 ecosystem, and brought so much new life into what we already remember to be Mario Kart 8. And I really enjoyed it, and even though I'm breaking my rules a little bit here, this is my list and I just wanted to add it in here because it is a game that has been around with me ever since I got my Nintendo Switch, and it was my very first Nintendo Switch game, and it's arguably the best Mario Kart game in terms of gameplay, tracks, music, content, characters, vehicles, all that stuff. Even though I might slightly prefer Mario Kart Wii just a little bit, that's a lot of the nostalgia speaking, but 
that's my number 10 on this list mario kart 8 deluxe plus the booster course pass the booster course pass is very important that is my one defining feature that makes this <laughs> a nintendo switch exclusive because that's not on the wii u number nine is ring fit adventure and you guys must be wondering, what the heck, why are you including Ring Fit Adventure on this list? Well, here's some cool trivia. I think it was maybe my second or third video on this channel. It is a Ring Fit Adventure review. You guys should check that out. That was actually a lot of fun to make because the game is genuinely a lot of fun. I remember when this game came out and when some reviews were out for it, a lot of people were saying this is Wii Fit meets Final Fantasy. And I saw that description and I thought that was the silliest thing I'd ever heard. And during the pandemic, a lot of us were home and just not doing much, but then we started to get a little bit active and started to do like home workouts on YouTube and stuff. And I was doing that with my family. And eventually I got bored of a lot of those because it was just the same thing over and over and over again. And then I remembered Ring Fit Adventure. That, that was a game that I heard about in 2019. I looked into it and I, on a whim, I just bought the game because I was in that like exercise fitness mood. I am going to be honest. This is one of the most unique games I've played on the Nintendo Switch. It uses the ring con and the leg strap to simulate real world exercises within four categories, arms, legs, abs, and yoga. And the way you do these exercises are within turn-based combat battles against specific enemies that you use these exercises slash attacks to fight against. And it's a very creative way to make exercise fun. And I will say, it's not only just a really fun game to play, these exercises really, genuinely, seriously make you break a sweat. I'm not kidding. I played this on my own, I got very far, and I was really feeling the workout and the burn. And even some of my family played it, and they had a really good time. And they also were really feeling the burn in their muscles and were getting pretty sore from these exercises. So it was a great time, and it was a lot of fun. And I highly recommend Ring Fit Adventure as a very unique gamified approach to exercise. So Ring Fit Adventure makes it to number 9 on my list. Number 8 is Astral Chain, one of the coolest, most unique action games I've ever played. I didn't really vibe with the story too much in Astral Chain, but I loved the action combat. Sometimes I don't know how to classify it. Is it a action RPG? Is it just an action game? Is it just an action game with a little bit of RPG elements in there? It's a little bit of both, but I really loved playing around with the different Legion styles. I think that's what they're called. And the combat is a very fluid, very fast, and very unique approach to the style of games that Platinum Games has. And even the look and feel and vibe of this game is just immaculate. It's one of the best looking games on the Nintendo Switch. The art style is top notch, amazing, and you're never gonna really find a game like this on any other system. And I'm eagerly anticipating and waiting for Astral Chain 2 to release on the Nintendo Switch 2 and just give us a very fluid and very fun, similar but more advanced combat system than this and plus having it in 60 FPS on the Nintendo Switch 2 would be so awesome. So Astral Chain makes it at number 8 on my list. Number 7 is Pokemon Legends Arceus. As I was making this list, I never thought I'd have a Pokemon game of all games on my list. I've been very critical and very harsh about the Pokemon series in the Nintendo Switch generation, but Pokemon Legends Arceus was a nice, welcome and just heartwarming surprise for me. I was a huge fan of Pokemon Diamond and Platinum as a kid and getting to explore the Sinnoh region all the way back in the past in the ancient times when it was Hisui was a lot of fun and I think the best thing I loved about this game is it really took me back to the original vibes of what Pokemon really was when I started playing it in Pokemon Leaf Green and Fire Red. It was all about catching the Pokemon. Gotta catch them all. Sure, there's battling and there's battling still involved in the game and battling is still a very important part of the Pokemon series, but catching the Pokemon almost felt like an impossible task after Generation 5. That vibe of catching the Pokemon, collecting them, completing the Pokedex, 
it slowly started to fade away from me. But having this truncated roster of Pokemon and the focus on capturing and expanding the Pokedex in this game really made me vibe with the whole gameplay loop and approach that this game was going for. It really brought me back to the roots of what I love so much about Pokemon, and on top of that, I love the designs, I love the new Hisui forms, and I just enjoyed the game overall. It was one of the highlights for me in that year of 2022. So Pokemon Legends Arceus makes it at number 7 on my list. Number 6 is Super Smash Bros Ultimate. This, in my opinion, is the ultimate video game crossover. If anyone tells you otherwise, I just, I, I don't know what to say because no other video game has Mario and Sonic and Mega Man and Joker from Persona 5 and Steve from Minecraft and Terry Bogard and Ryu and Ken from Street Fighter. All these characters in one game duking it out against each other. And what I really appreciate about this game and what I love to showcase to other people whenever they come over or whenever I'm playing with them is all the little hints and references in the characters' taunts, in their movesets, in the stages, in the music. It is a very detail-oriented game and really, really takes a lot of inspiration from the source material that these games come from. And what I really appreciate about Smash Bros. Ultimate very particularly more than any of the other Smash Bros. games is it really got me into a lot more video game franchises like Persona, and it got me back into the Kingdom Hearts series. It got me interested in what King of Fighters and Fatal Fury is and so many other games that these DLC characters came from. I was so interested in them and I just jumped into these series to see, hey, what's all the hype about? And I really appreciate Smash Bros. Ultimate for that. And on top of that, it's just one of the best multiplayer games I have. Every time my friends come over, or every time I bring my Switch over to anyone else's place, I always have Smash Bros. Ultimate with me so we can always have a great time. This game has a lot of memories associated with me, a lot of hours spent in this game with me and my friends, and it's just a love letter to every single video game franchise present in this game. So Super Smash Bros. Ultimate takes a spot on number 6 on my list. Number 5 is Super Mario Odyssey. This is a game that I initially didn't think I would enjoy that much. I was like, oh, it's another 3D Mario game, it's similar to like Super Mario 64, whatever, I, I just kind of brushed it aside. But it was actually the second game that I got for the Nintendo Switch before I went on a vacation to visit my family in India, actually. So Super Mario Odyssey was quite the surprise for me, because I saw the hat mechanics and the cap mechanics and the capturing and all that, and I was like, how is this going to play into the game? How creative are they going to get with this? And I forgot that this is Mario, this is Nintendo. They are going to get very, very, very creative with this. And I found myself really enjoying this game and getting more and more and more and more surprised by the things that this game was introducing in terms of the capture mechanics, the characters that you can embody with that capture mechanic and how you just interact with the world with these various mechanics that the game has introduced to you. Not only that, it's so much fun to control Mario in this game. I love Mario Galaxy and loved floating around and jumping around in that game as a kid and this is a nice genuine upgraded evolution of how Mario feels to uh, play as and control and the interactivity in this game is just top notch in my opinion. One more thing I want to add about Super Mario Odyssey is it kind of made me remember why I love video games in the first place. There is one part in this game and you guys might know exactly what it is but it kind of reminded me of why I play video games in the first place and it was a very iconic and very memorable experience that I'll never ever ever forget. Oftentimes, I'm very critical of the Mario series, but in this instance, Super Mario Odyssey kind of checked all my boxes, and I really enjoyed what that game had to offer. It's one of my favorite games on the Switch, and probably my favorite Mario game that I've played. So Super Mario Odyssey comes in at number 5 on my list. Number 4 is a tough one, and since this is my list, this is my rules, I'm going to have a tie over here, and you guys might be a little surprised to hear this, but... Fire Emblem Three Houses is tying with Fire Emblem Engage. 
the common sentiment about these two games is Three Houses is by far the winner, by far the better game in terms of critical, commercial, and just fan reception overall in general. Even in terms of sales, Three Houses sold quite a bit better than Engage. But I gotta say, I was one of those people that went into Engage and didn't really expect to be blown away at the same level as Three Houses. And what I got, I really genuinely thoroughly enjoyed. So Three Houses is more character and story focused, and it incorporates the calendar system seen in games like Persona and blends that in with the Fire Emblem tactical role-playing gameplay. But it also has the four different paths that you can take and also has that DLC route. So just a lot of replayability, a lot of story content, a lot of character interaction there. Fire Emblem Engage really doubles down on the tactical battles of Fire Emblem and introduces the emblem ring mechanic, which I really loved. You know what I was saying previously in my entry about Super Smash Bros. Ultimate that each of those games really pay homage to the series and it's very detail oriented. Fire Emblem Engage does the same thing because it's an anniversary game. Each emblem ring is very intricately designed to play similarly to the character that they're paying homage to. I don't want to get too much into details here. I feel like Three Houses really excelled in that story avenue, but in terms of gameplay and tactical combat and just making me feel really good and smart about my decisions, Engage really, really hit that home. And that's one thing I really truly love about Fire Emblem. Once you like conquer these really difficult maps and do these really crazy things and have these awesome builds that you created yourself, you feel so smart, you feel so rewarded deep down inside and you just love it so much. And both of these games really made me feel that way, but Engage had that a lot more on the tactical action side, but Three Houses has some of the best characters I've ever experienced in a Fire Emblem game. Fire Emblem Engage and Fire Emblem Three Houses take the spot as a tie for number four. Number three is Metroid Dread. Metroid Dread was one of the best and most hype announcements in any Nintendo Direct because I remember Metroid Dread being a myth. I remember this game being one of those games that we never thought would ever release. And a lot of us thought that if we get another 2D Metroid game as a follow-up to Fusion, it probably won't even be the fabled Metroid Dread. But we saw Mercury Steam come out guns blazing with Metroid Dread in 2021. And a lot of people brush this game off as just another 2D platformer, just a very simple kind of game like that. That's far from the truth. I love Metroid Dread's map design, its level design, its items and progression system, and it really, really nails that Metroidvania level structure, that lock and key level structure established by Super Metroid. Honestly, this game, I, w I didn't think I would feel this way, but it's on par with Super Metroid, and the only reason I like Super Metroid just a little bit more is because I vibe with the music a little more in Super Metroid than I did in Metroid Dread. Metroid is not really a, a series known and recognized for its storytelling, but I really think that Metroid Dread's story was one of the biggest surprises ever for me, and it's easily probably my favorite story in the entire Metroid series. If you guys haven't played Metroid Dread, if you enjoy Metroidvanias like Hollow Knight and Dead Cells and games like that, you should definitely pick this game up. It's not your typical platformer and I highly, highly recommend it. One of the best games available on the Nintendo Switch. Metroid Dread takes the spot of number three on my list. Number two is The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. <laughs> I couldn't put Breath of the Wild here because, like I said, I'm only keeping this to Nintendo Switch exclusive games, minus Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, but I had the booster course pack in there, but whatever. Tears of the Kingdom was a game that I had been looking forward to ever since it was announced in 2019. I had so many theories, so many hopes, so many predictions, so many areas of speculation related 
relating to this game and then approaching release I realized that a lot of that may not be fulfilled but in the end I would love what the Zelda team would have cooked up regardless of the hype that I had in mind. Looking back at Tears of the Kingdom it definitely wasn't a perfect experience for me. I really enjoyed it in every single way. It is one of the most technically impressive games I've ever experienced and ever seen in my life. But there are things that I wish were a little bit better. Putting those aside, I'm still astonished and still awestruck at how much Nintendo put into this game. All the content, all the sky islands, all the areas and the depths that you can explore, all the changes on the surface. It's so much fun to play and even though some things may not have been as well developed and well thought out as some of us thought and some of us expected, I'm looking back at the game, I'm seeing the gameplay of it, seeing other people play it, and I kind of miss it. I miss playing around with Ultra Hand, Fuse, Recall, and Ascend. Those abilities are just so much fun to play around with and interact with things in the environment in Hyrule. And I really think that this game is doing things that no other video game will ever do in terms of gameplay physics, in terms of its gameplay engine, in terms of its interactivity, and the biggest mind-blowing thing ever is all of this is running on the Nintendo Switch smoothly at a stable frame rate. The game isn't breaking, the game isn't falling apart, my Switch isn't exploding, and I find that to be incredible that a game like this on all 2015 hardware is still running so well and really, really breaking the boundaries of what games and what video games can be. I highly, highly, of course, recommend this to any Zelda fan and anyone who enjoys open world action adventure games. This is one of the ultimate experiences you can ever have. So before we go on to number one, I wanted to show you guys some honorable mentions that I had. And a lot of these honorable mentions, like I mentioned earlier on in the video, will be multi-platform releases and games that were originally on the Nintendo Switch, but then eventually went to other systems. And also there might be some remakes and remasters on here as well. So yeah, here are my honorable mentions. Alright, here we go. Number one, if you guys hadn't guessed it already, some of you guys probably saw this coming. Number one, my favorite Nintendo Switch game of all time and one of my favorite video games of all time is none other than Xenoblade Chronicles 3. <laughs> and this might be one of the first lists that you might have ever seen where a Xenoblade game is number one on a top 10 fair Nintendo Switch games list. That's, I, I know it's crazy, but just hear me out. For me personally, for me as a person and as a gamer and as a fan of video games, as Nish Quick Pops, Xenoblade Chronicles 3 has every single thing I personally look for in a video game. Really, really awesome gameplay and combat and a loop of gameplay and combat that always keeps me wanting to customize and develop my characters and level them up even more in very creative and unique approaches with the class system, with the Ouroboros skill tree, and so many other things with the customization of the accessories and gems, etc, etc. Not only that, the story is one of my favorite stories of all time. The cast is very relatable and very, very down to earth. 
one of the best casts in any video game and my personal favorite cast in the Xenoblade Chronicles trilogy. The story and the themes and the message that this game has really, really resonates with me. The story of Ouroboros and Mobius is very inspiring and just a very beautiful story about looking forward to the future, never giving up, and never stagnating and staying the same and always developing yourself and becoming a better person with every single day and every single moment. Not only that, but this game also has one of the biggest things I look for in a video game, and that is an amazing soundtrack. The soundtrack is really good, very well developed, with a great cast of amazing composers, not only the legendary Yasunori Mitsuda, but you got Ace, Tomori Kudo, Chiko, Kenji Hiramatsu, Manami Kyoto, and so many other people who make some of the best music in all of JRPGs. Not only is the music good, but a lot of the music tells its own story, and it's not just there to sound good and just sound cool and give you nice musical melodies to hear as you're exploring in the background. A lot of these songs and the gameplay and the cutscenes and the areas are telling their own story with motifs and symbolism and calling back to other melodies in previous games and in previous instances within Xenoblade 3 itself. On top of that, one of the best open worlds, one of the best environments you can ever find in a game, and there's so much to explore, so much to do in this world, and of course, this is another monumental technical achievement on the Nintendo Switch. Monolith Soft are geniuses in that way. But I do want to also include Future Redeemed on this list. It is a DLC expansion for Xenoblade Chronicles 3, but it is also sort of like its own video game experience. It is a culmination of every single Xenoblade Chronicles game in terms of the story and even in terms of like some of the gameplay stuff. In a review that I made about it last year, I call it probably the magnum opus of Monolith Soft and probably the best thing that they've ever made. And both Xenoblade 3 and Future Redeem combined easily take the spot of my favorite Nintendo Switch game of all time. Both of those experiences give me every single thing I look for in a game. Amazing combat, an amazing gameplay loop, awesome story and characters, beautiful OST, and an amazing world to explore. I couldn't have asked for anything better, and if you guys have not played the Xenoblade Chronicles games, I really do not know what you guys are waiting for. Just jump into it and experience peak fiction. Xenoblade Chronicles 3 plus Future Redeem takes the spot of number one on my list. So what did you think of this list? It was quite an interesting order that I put these games in, and I want to know what you guys think, especially with me putting Xenoblade 3 at number one adding Mario Kart <laughs> 8 Deluxe in there as well, and also, what did you think of my tie of Fire Emblem Three Houses and Gage? I know a lot of people like Three Houses so much more, so I want to know what you guys think about my list in the comments below, and if there's any other games that I missed out on, let me know, because you might have thought like, hey, this list is missing like Luigi's Mansion 3, the Splatoon games, and Kirby and the Forgotten Land, or something else that I might have missed out on because there's so many amazing first party or exclusive games on the Switch. Either I didn't play them, either I didn't beat them, or they may not be on my radar just yet. So if there's something that you didn't see on this list, and if it's one of your favorites, let me know in the comments below. And of course, I'd love to see everyone else's lists and everyone else's opinions in the comments below as well. Let's keep it respectful and civil down there. And the Nintendo Switch life is coming to a close, but I thought I'd celebrate this amazing console generation with this fun little top 10 list video and kind of like a remake slash updated version because my 2022 version is very, very outdated as of now. So yeah, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Give this video a like and subscribe for more content like this. This is Nish Quick signing off. Have a great day. Go play some great games today. Like any amazing game that you saw on this list on the Nintendo Switch. I'll see you guys in the next one. Later. Hey guys, this is Nishquick. Thank you so much for watching that video. And if you enjoyed it, check out these two videos on the left and maybe subscribe if you haven't on your way out. And big shout out to all my channel members whose names you can see on the screen right now. I'll see you guys in the next video. Later.